Hello everyone. Uh, today is on uh, 36th talk of uh, Khaki. Uh, my topic today is uh, the forgotten Gond dynasty of Vidarbha. First of all, let me introduce shortly. Uh, my name is Amit Bhagat. Uh, I'm basically from Mumbai, but uh, currently working on uh, Vidarbha region, Eastern Vidarbha in particular. Uh, the, my area of work is basically a prehistory of Vidarbha. Uh, uh, Stone Age, Megalithic period, and then uh, of course I'm working on other parts also. And uh, I've discovered I've discovered uh, some megalithic sites, uh, burial sites, eight such sites in Chandrapur Bandara region, and also uh, some of the Paleolithic and uh, uh, Microlithic uh, Mesolithic sites in those region in Vardha and Vanganga Basin. And uh, uh, fortunately, uh, I'm successful uh, in uh, preserving and uh, protecting one of the sites which otherwise uh, would have been dumped under the uh, government project. So uh, on that site, a future uh, museum and a prehistoric park would be coming. So um, that would be the first of its kind such prehistoric park uh, not only in Maharashtra, but in an entire South Asia. Uh, while starting with it, uh, this is the scheme I'm going to follow. Uh, first of all, I'll uh, take you all through this Bodhwana land, what exactly uh, the term is, term meaning, and uh, who are the Gones, what is their distinctive culture, and uh, basically the uh, dynasties, they were ruling uh, during the medieval period when Sultanate and Mughals were ruling in the north. Um, and uh, there were uh, mainly four dynasties and uh, I'm basically focusing on the dynasty which was ruling on Vidarbha region. And there are uh, three capitals. First was uh, in uh, Telangana, Telangana region, Sirpur, and uh, rest two are uh, Ballarpur and Chandrapur are from uh, Vidarbha region. Uh, actually, uh, to cover Gondwana itself is, is a, a kind of a very huge and a kind of difficult task because uh, people are very less aware about uh, the region, their culture, their distinctiveness, and uh, mostly people do not know where exactly this Gondwana is located and who are these Gond people. Uh, be, because being in that uh, forest area, which is densely uh, infested with uh, wild animals. People are hardly aware about uh, uh, their culture and their art and ar architecture. Uh, the Gon dynasty, which I'm going to talk about, that ruled in uh, that Vidarbha region for almost around 500 years. So the dynasty that ruled for such a long year and people are hardly aware about uh, such dynasty. The Satwanas ruled uh, over the Maharashtra, Western India and uh, um, also Andhra, uh, part of Andhra uh, region. People are aware about them. Uh, uh, research papers, scholarly work has been uh, has been uh, been published, and uh, uh, books have been written. But people are hardly aware about a dynasty. Forget about the 500 year rule. But they are not even aware about their uh, the name of their king, uh, any art, architecture, any monument, or any heritage sites. So. Um, that's why the title is the Forgotten Gond Dynasty of Vidarbha. And I'll uh, take you through the actual uh, peculiarities and why it needs to be studied and uh, need to be visited. Uh, 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 first, first of all, the Gondwana land. As the name suggests, Gondwana means forest of Gond. Gond is a tribe. Uh, it is uh, one of the largest tribe of uh, India. And not only India, uh, one of the largest tribe of the world. And uh, it has a population of around 1.3 crore. Uh, it covers the geog uh, geographically, it is, it is a very integrated area, it means unlike other tribes, which are segregated or separate, uh, separated in, uh, uh, distributed in various districts and various regions of uh, uh, Indian Peninsula. This Gondwana is geographically the centered location. So that's why they have been referred as the Central India also. And during British period, it was referred as Central Provinces. So the word Gondwana 
gond themselves called as a kond kond means hill so they are the residents of hill so those people those tribes which are residing in the jungle areas hill areas they called themselves as a gond or they also refer themselves as a koitur koitur means uh, uh, koitur means the term came from koi koi is a tribe so koi from koi it comes kond also uh, koya also and koi tribe also so the origin is a koitur uh being a non aryan and dravidian type tribe uh it is basically uh, very distinctive from other uh, region uh actually it covers the part of gondwana covers the part of maharashtra basically vidarbha region uh madhya pradesh uttar pradesh jharkhand bihar odisha uh chatisgarh uh, telangana and part of andhra pradesh as uh i've written dandakaranya the eastern uh, part of it is called as dandakaranya it is also referred as jhadi mandal or jhadi pradesh the mahanubhav sect founder chakradhar swami uh, has called this region the part east to the berar region or the varad region is called as jhadi mandal by the, by him uh, though it is a central central india it was it was very popular uh, region among uh, britishers so britishers made it very popular not only in the uh, uh, in asia but across the world so even they have connected that gondwana to uh, the theory of gondwana from from where, from which the alfred wegener has uh, made his continental drift theory and he he took the word gondwana from there so everyone knows gondwana but it is hardly uh, in connection with the actual gondwana land it is also land of dinosaurs land of tigers minerals mines and also land of diamonds let's uh, talk about this continental drift theory uh, uh, in uh, uh, in uh, one or two minutes uh, the, actually uh, uh, it is also called as a, a supercontinent theory so uh, people believe that uh, around 25 crores year ago there was only a single landmass it was called as a pangaea and the uh, the sea part ocean is called as a panthalsia then pangaea got separated into the northern uh, laurasia and the uh, southern gondwana land then it started separating uh, that is uh, drifting away from each other and then finally uh, various continents have been formed out of this uh, this gondwana and uh, uh, laurasia the laurasia forms the asia uh, europe and the northern america while gondwana uh, from gondwana africa uh, southern america australia and antarctica has been formed and from africa you can see from here from africa a part of it uh, around uh, the cretaceous period means around 6.5 crore year ago the part of it was uh, separated and uh, and drifted towards the tibetian pla uh, 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 plateau and it collapsed over it and because of that the folded mountains of the himalayan has been formed so uh, so it was uh, it was a part of that gondwana which was actually uh, separated from african uh, continent so the gondwana term has been popularized from this uh, theory so let's talk about land of dinosaurs as i already said uh, during 6.5 crore year ago um the the continental drift means the drifting has uh, actually uh, took place and actually uh, the different continent as we see today has been formed so we are talking about the era or age just before that so it is called as a jurassic era uh, somewhere around uh, 50 uh, 20 20 crores to uh, around 6.5 crore year ago and that theory of dinosaurs means the where dinosaurs has been found and their fossils has been found that uh, theory supports the continental drift theory because uh, those uh, dinosaurs which have been formed which have been found in the different uh, continent like in african continent has same has been found in a uh, in india in the central india in uh, in part of the western india the same type of dinosaurs has been found so it also supports the continental drift theory so why i called it the land of dinosaurs you can see in the map the region where dinosaurs have been means their fossils 
the uh, remnants have been fo found has been marked out so here the narmada river the narmada basin so south of the narmada basin this region the pa the gondwana part here uh, eastern vidarbha telangana region uh, here most of the sites and most of the uh, uh, skeletons the complete skeletons have been recovered from these sites so this is the most important area uh, the narmada vardha vainganga godavari pranita basins this is the most important and the second important part is the of course uh, the western india uh, that is gujarat uh, balasinor balasinor has a uh, as a largest uh, fossil dinosaur park uh, we can found here in balasinor and near amdavad so it's a land of dinosaurs and i uh, mentioned here uh, three dinosaurs which have been uh, excavated the fossils have been excavated from uh, these basins gondwana the barapasaurus kotasaurus and titanosaurus <clears throat> the first one is a kotasaurus the name suggest kota that is the kota formation geological it is a geological formation from that layer it has been excavated uh, uh, from yamanpalli village of telangana so the uh, species is called as yamanpalli insensis and another was barapasaurus tagorei it was named after ravindranath tagore uh, during his uh, in the to mark his uh, birth centenary years in uh, 1961 so it is called as a barapasaurus barapa means a big foot so you can see here the 1.7 meter long big foot have been discovered uh, discovered from telangana region uh, from actually pochampalli village in the telangana so it is called as a barapasaurus tagorei and another was kotasaurus so the name so the name suggest uh from the kota formation and that too from yaman pally uh, yaman pally village so both these dinosaurs were uh, were living uh, around 15 to 16 crore year ago in the uh, godavari and uh, pranita basin and the third one uh, the picture is is here third one is a titanosaurus you can see it is the one of the largest dinosaurs of uh, uh, which have been found out uh he was means that dinosaur was living around 6 to 7 crore year ago uh that is the uh, cretaceous period and uh the peculiarity of these dinosaurs was that uh it was a, a herbivorous means vegetarian dinosaur so anandwan area uh, the famous uh, uh, famous uh, uh, area Uh, for Anand Anandwan is a famous area yeah, uh, for uh, leprosy uh, work of uh, Baba Amte, and also the same area, the Varora area of Chandrapur, uh, also uh, gives the earliest evidence of rice in the entire world. The his feces means Titanosaurus feces have been studied by the Michigan University, and they have, uh, came out with the result that in that feces, what they called as uh, uh, coprolite, uh, in the cross section study they have shown. that it it contains the wild variety of uh, rice so it was the earliest evidence uh, of rice in the entire world in the wild form it 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 was from 4.5 to 5 crore year ago and the, the same region is today is a rice bowl of uh, vidarbha so it was a, a land of uh, dinosaurs now coming to the uh, next age age of humans so uh, the arun sonakia the left uh, left side image arun sonakia the famous geologist he discovered narmada man from narmada valley uh, the man the, the cranium of that uh, the fossil was around 5 to 6 lakh year old uh, cranium earlier we we everyone knows uh, the peking man cromenon man neanderthal man they have been discovered from different regions but india was not uh, not a part of that that club which found the earliest evidences in the form of fossils so so he in 18 uh, in 1982 he found it uh, though he accidentally found it but we could not found any other uh, such uh, fossil from that period so it is called as narmada man uh, and he uh, he is believed to be still alone he is waiting for another uh, such fossil so narmada man from narmada basin and you can see here uh, the uh, that that part when there was a uh, wild animals roaming uh, in those gondwana region today also uh, the 
forest is very uh, dense one but that time uh, the certain uh, animals uh, mammals were li uh, living but they are now extinct like mammoth uh, woolly rhino and uh, there is one theory that people uh, have means the stone age people have hunted them at a such a level that it became a reason for their extinction and several such uh, stone age sites where when where uh, uh, stone tools and uh, the factory sites have been uh, discovered from uh, narmada basin uh, vardha vainganga basin godavari basin so almost around 1000 such sites have been reported uh, since last uh, uh, couple of decades uh coming to the uh, that continuation of the prehistoric part this is a prehistoric uh, cave where the uh, uh, evidences have been uh, collected of a prehistoric man and this cave is supposed to be the origin place of origin of gonds they call it as a place of origin uh, it's a kachargarh in gondia uh, district of maharashtra a vidarbha region uh, people believe the gond people believe that their their guru they call it as a pari kupar lingo uh, he uh, he freed uh, he freed some of the uh, some of their uh, ancient ancestors from these caves which have been shut down by shiva shambhu shik shiva so it was the considered as the origin then then they went to the different regions of uh, gondwana and they spread their culture so this is the oldest and it has been corroborated with the archaeological evidences too and it is supposed to be the one of the largest uh, largest cave of india and people call it as a, one of the largest cave also uh, from asia region here you can see gond people they are dancing celebrating that kacharagad the kacharagad fair is uh, very famous famous fair and lakhs of people flock Uh, during the month of february for the fair every year then coming to the later part of uh, prehistory that is megalithic period why this region uh, is very famous for uh, for archaeological research and study is because of megalithic as the name suggest megaliths means the big stones so uh, there is a practice burial practice among the gond community uh, though gond has a several uh, sub communities like madia muria uh and pardhan uh and rajgond also so uh, this this was there in the old uh, uh, the old uh, old custom to bury the, their deads and to raise such kinds of big stones to mark their uh, uh mark uh, uh, mark those uh, uh, burial places in the memory of these so they they could uh, worship it and uh, it gives blessings to them so uh, here you can see the first one uh, the left one is the uh, left and the right one is the uh, the big menhirs and the third one is the anthropomorphic uh, like a human shape uh, anthropomorphic uh, megalithic even there are uh, hundreds of uh, cane circle means stone circles dolmens are there and megalithic is a very hot topic across the world to study how it is related with the uh, prehistoric astronomy prehistoric culture and and also uh, the prehistoric way of uh, of a belief of life after death uh going quickly through uh, this historical chronology so uh actually the region was basically from gone from different phases it means as people uh, believe that it was aloof from these dynastic rules but it was very much a part of uh, uh, those historical events so from mahajan padad mauryas satwahana gupta even wakataka capitals were there in vidarbha region uh, both the capitals uh, one from uh, vatsagulma washim and another was nagardhan in nagpur uh, the capitals were there gupta period was there even kalidasa and bhavuti the uh, one of the the famous sanskrit scholar the top most sanskrit scholar were believed to be uh, belong to from uh, that uh, vidarbha region then kalchuri period yadva period hoysal period uh, the period we are interested in because from that part the the mid part of medieval uh, india starts and from uh, there it begins uh, gondwana dynasty and the, those gondwana rules begins from there and sultanat bahmani mughal they are the contemporary of gond kings nizam shahi and then uh, these rules 
uh, these dynasties were uh, annexed and uh, formed part of Maratha or Nizam rule. So Gondwana, as I already said, Dandakarana, Jhadi Mandal, Jhadi Pradesh. So it was the central part of Gondwana, called as Central Provinces by British. It's the Gondwana. So here, here you can see this part, these 10, 12 districts are known as a Vidarbha region. The, this one part, the eastern part is, is in uh, Chhattisgarh. Uh, the northern part is, uh, is a part of uh, Madhya Pradesh. And then uh, northeastern part is a part of uh, Jharkhand and Bihar. So there were four uh, dynasties uh, from starting from 14, or we can call it as, call it as a, a late 13th century. Uh, they were there up to 18th century. So around 400 to 500 years, they were ruling the central highlands of uh, India. So the first one was the Jabalpur's Garamandla kingdom. Second, of course, we that which we are talking about, Chanda king, Chanda kingdom of Chandrapur. Third one was the Kerala kingdom. It came later, but later was then uh, absorbed into the Devgarh kingdom of Chindwada. Uh, this uh, Devgarh kingdom is very popular because of uh, Rani uh, Durgavati and also Bhakt Bulan Shah who established the city of Nagpur. Here you can see uh, the Maharashtra and the eastern part of it, eastern and northeastern part of it is a Vidarbha and Vidarbha too is divided into the eastern and western Vidarbha. Uh, these are the rulers of Chanda dynasty. I've mentioned their, uh, their period, those famous rulers period. So uh, they have three capitals, Sirpur, Ballarpur, Chandrapur. How they have shifted from Sirpur to Chandrapur it's, itself is a fascinating story. The first one, Sirpur. <clears throat> it's famous today because of its uh, Sirpur Kagaznagar a uh, paper manufacturing factory in the India. Uh, it's in Telangana, uh, 250 kilometers from Nagpur and 100 from uh, Chandrapur. Uh, one of the, on the bank of one of the tributary of Pranita river. That time during those early days, uh, it was a feudatory of, I means those uh, Chandrapur kings were the feudatories of uh, Kakatiyas of Hoysala. Here you can see the remnants of uh, old fort and tank. They belong to 14th and 15th, uh, uh, 13th and 14th century. So actually the coal bill, the first person who gathered this community and taught them how to, um, how to make weapons out of uh, the iron and, and why this community is also famous for, then they knew the iron smelting procedure uh, from 3,000 to 400, 4,000 uh, since 4,000 years. So they knew how to collect uh, those minerals, how to identify them and how to smell them to, uh, to take out iron from them. And then they could uh, make weapons out of uh, those, uh, out of that. And because of that, they had a cutting edge over other communities. So because of coal bill, the community gathered and then, uh, the kings, the first king, that is Bhim Ballar Singh, he established the capital of uh, Sirpur, though uh, they were feudatory, so it was very small capital with small fort. Kharja and Hir Singh, the third king, they, they were means for around 70, 80 years, they were ruling from that, uh, that region of Telangana. And then when uh, in the early part of 13th century, uh, because of the invasion of uh, Alauddin Khilji, his noble, uh, fearful noble Malik Kafur, um, he annexed the Yadwa, uh, the Yadwa dynasty and Vidarbha was part of the Yadwa dynasty. So they had a loose control over Vidarbha, but, but in absence of that, there was vacuum in Vidarbha region. And also uh, during the same time, like 1320s, uh, he, uh, Malik Kafur defeated the Kakatiyas uh, sorry, uh, Kakatiyas of Warangal. Uh, mistakenly I said uh, Hoysala. It was Kakatiyas of Warangal. He defeated them and then uh, again uh, Muhammad bin Tughlaq defeated uh, and annexed 
the kingdom of Warangal, and because of that, there was a vacuum in the Vidarbha region and also in the Telangana region, and because of which this feudatory could uh, could come to the power. So uh, the rise of uh, Gond dynasty of Chanda was around happened in around 1320s. Then their fourth king has made the capital Ballarpur. It is also called as the Ballar Shah. It's very famous uh, railway station. Uh, it's a, a, actually a junction on Delhi Chennai route. And also, it's a technical halt. Every uh, every train who is going, uh, which is passing through, uh, uh, going from uh, uh, south to the north, has to go through from uh, Ballar Shah and has to halt there for uh, for technical reasons. So uh, it's very famous. It is also famous for uh, the paper industry, the Ballarpur paper industry of Thapars, and uh, it is one of the topmost paper industry. The region, Siripur also and Ballarpur also, the region is very famous for paper mill, big, big, uh, because the forest is very near, and uh, they could um, they could acquire the raw material from the forest woods for the uh, as raw material for the paper industry. So, um, Ballar Shah. People believe that the Ballar Shah name I means mean, the name came from uh, the another ruler, Khandika Ballar Shah. It was a tenth ruler of uh, Gond dynasty, but actually the name came from uh, Adiya Ballal Singh. So the Ballalpur, and later it was corrupted to Ballarpur, and then because of Ballar Shah, it became. Uh, known as Ballar Shah, so uh, there is there are two names, Ballar Shah also and Ballarpur also. So you can see the earlier kings had their name as a Singh. Later it became Shah when the Brahman Shah dynasty came and even Mughal dynasty came. So they followed that Muslim uh, just to. Uh, they were kind of feudatory, not exactly, but they were paying tributes. So also to show their allegiance, also they could have changed their uh, name to Shah. So it's on Varda River. Here, uh, the another photo is of railway uh, station, Chandrapur, Ballarpur, both railway station uh, in 2018. They received the first prize in India for the the cleanest railway station in the India. So that was the great distinction these two railway station got. Here you can see the Ballarpur fort is also in ruins because uh, Gonds. Those Gond kings were ruling from uh, Ballarpur 400, 500 years ago. So when they left, it became uh, means it got ruined. This is the royal emblem of uh, Gond dynasty of Chanda. Here you can see the fearful uh, uh, lion and capturing elephant. So the lion and or the, or the tiger is is the basically a symbol of this region. This region is also called as the land of tiger because it has several uh, tiger reserves and almost around, I think around 400 to 500 tigers from those tiger reserves. Kanha, Bandhavgad, Tadoba, uh, Navegao, Nagzira, all these uh, tiger uh, reserves were famous in, in the world. So it forms a part of that means it symbolizes that power of tiger. Here is a tomb of Khandika Ballar Shah, who was actually not a founder of Ballarpur, but the founder of Chandrapur city. Ballarpur's founder was Adiya Ballar Singh. So this is the grand uh, uh, tomb, which looks like a Muslim, it resembles the Muslim architecture. In the bottom, you can see the footsteps. Actually, there are around uh, 84 footsteps. So it uh, it is believed that 42 wives of Khandika Ballar Shah were went on the funeral pyre of uh, their husbands. So they went. They became sati. So these are the footsteps of sati. Though sati is not a part of a Gond culture, but uh, when they when they came into power, they acquired uh, several uh, several customs and cultures of uh, elements of 
Hindu and Muslim culture. So it's a part of Sanskritization. Even people believe that uh, a dynasty which rose from the the way means very uh, wildish tribe, uh, very Aboriginal tribe, but still there is no connection. Means they have not created a platform for those tribe, or still that tribe is not known to the world because. Uh, though they rose from that Gond dynasty, they have separated themselves. Means they have acquired various elements of another uh, culture, and uh, even uh, uh, worships of Shivas, Kali's, all these. Uh, and they, uh, the, they are they are the typical example of the Sanskritization, where they left. Means they have not uh, given away their own culture, but basically acquire the uh, the the Hindu popular Hindu and Muslim culture. you can see in the their art architecture and various traditions also this is the tomb tomb of uh, nirkan shah the last ruler so here you can see side by side uh, the tomb of the founder of chandrapur and the last ruler of chandrapur he was present in the uh, in this fort balakur fort by raguji bhosle famous raguji bhosle the king of bhosla king of uh, nagpur and he died there in 1751 and with that the rule ended in 1751 and bosley took over then coming to the uh, the actually royal capital of uh, chanda dynasty the gond dynasty of chanda it's chandrapur the name means the old name was chanda now it is called as chandrapur people believe that the old name was actually indrapur then it became chandra chandrapur and then uh, uh, during british period it was commonly referred as chanda instead of chandrapur and after independence the name again uh, it it was again renamed as chandrapur so we are uh, will be going through these uh, five monuments anchaleshwar temple chandrapur fort mahakali temple tombs of royal uh, dynasty and the mono, lalpet monoliths first of all let me take take you uh, through this uh, these monuments through the story why means what are the what were the reasons uh, uh, behind the establishment of these monuments the story is really uh, interesting one the khankya ballar shah as we have seen which uh, tomb is there in ballarpur but he established chandrapur city how come uh, his tomb is in ballarpur and how he established the chandrapur See it itself is very uh, very interesting uh, story. Actually, Khan Kya Ballar Shah, he was ruling from 1470 to 1497, so it was around 15th century. And let uh, let me read uh, one of the para also, a description of uh, Chanda Chandrapur by uh, Sir I R Chatterton in 19th century. a charming little city hidden away in the heart of the jungles there it has stood for the last 5 centuries with its beautiful crenellated walls and battlements which have suffered surprisingly little from times or man's rough hands unlike the gond capitals of devgarh kerala and Ch chauragad chanda stands in the open plains more than 160 km to the south of satpura so he explained why those monuments remain as it is and we uh, suffer very uh, little uh, from the hands of the rough hands of the time so coming to the anchaleshwar temple <coughs> the name actually was achaleshwar means achal that which is steady or can't be moved so uh, one day as the legend says one day the king khankya ballar shah was hunting northwest of ballarpur he grew thirsty and rode up to the dry bed of the jharpat river looking for water soon some water was discovered in the hole and the king after quenching his thirst washed his face hands and feet that night he slept soundly the first time for many years and the next morning his beloved wife queen hiratani was gladdened by seeing that many of the tumors that were spread on his body had disappeared from all parts touched by the water actually the, his name khankya uh, the name came from the khankya 
the tumors so uh, he was humorously called as a khandkya the one king who had a tum uh, tumor or the ugly king so on asserting ascertaining what had occurred during the king's ride the queen hiratani ascribed his partial cure to the virtue of the water then used and entreated him to take her to the spot where he had quenched his thirst accordingly both proceeded to the jharpat river uh, chanda fort or the chanda city is, is on the bank of jharpat river and in little a little while the hole was found on clearing away the grass and mud they saw five footprints of cow in the solid rock each filled with the unfailing supply of the water further inquiry made it clear that this spot was none other than the resting place of the great god god achaleshwar the immovable one queen hiratani advised the erection of the temple over the healing waters and the king approving the idea sent his officers to collect skilled artisans for the work it was later renovated by uh, another queen hirai in the limestone so the achaleshwar temple you can see it still stand after 600 years and in the memory of the king khandkya balla shah's restoration to the health and happiness so here is the place of achaleshwar with the continuous supply of water is coming the this is the actual place and the uh, the temple has been renovated after uh, some 200 years after afterwards by queen uh, hirai this is the chandrapur fort another interesting story behind the chandrapur fort while the construction was going on of uh, of that uh, achaleshwar fort and the uh the khandkya balasha regularly used to visit that place being a very uh, magical or very uh, fascinating place so while the temple of achaleshwar was in the process of construction another event occurred which led to the founding of the city of chandrapur it was the king customs to ride over from balasha from time to time the distance between balasha and chandrapur is 15 km uh so you used to come he used to ride on a horse um and accompanied with uh, his favorite dog one day when riding back to the balasha and while close to the temple a hare darted out of a bush and strange to relate began to chase his dog the dog fled in the wild terror and the hare in close pursuit astonished at the sight the king followed the chase as closely as he could at times with a view of shaking off his pursuer the dog ran in wild circles while the hare took a shorter and more zigzag course on one occasion the hare actually closed with the dog only to be quickly shaken off and so the race continued until the both the animals were nearly exhausted then when they were approaching the place where the race had begun after a circular chase of nearly 7 miles means around 12 km the dog in wild desperation turned on the hare and after a sharp struggle killed it full of this strange adventure he rode back to pallarpur to tell the story to his uh, queen hiratani again her genius penetrated into the inner meaning of this mysterious occurrence it was clearly omen sent by gods that the khankya balla shah was again to change his capital and build a fortified city around the temple of achaleshwar the chase was but the gods own method of town planning the walls of the city was built on the circular path followed by the hare and dog and the strong bastion bastion have been uh, built and the place where where the dog killed hare it is it is referred as or called as a most unfortunate place and afterwards when in 1818 britishers entered uh, from this place so this is the place where actually that um, dog killed hare so this is the pathanpura gate built uh is a part of that uh, uh, that that fort the fort has uh, four gates and five uh, sub gates or called as the chor khidki so this is the uh, bastion pathanpura from here britishers entered into the city so people relate both these things that it was uh, already been uh, signaled out that this will going to happen so the the This, that the twelve kilometer long fort. This is one of the very long fort of Maharashtra. Come up, this is finished. 
हाँ हाँ लॉन्ग फोर्ट ऑफ महाराष्ट्र एंड हियर यू कैन सी द बैस्टन्स द स्ट्रॉन्ग बैस्टन्स एंड ऑल्सो द वेरी हाई वॉल्स ऑफ इट दो द किंग हैज कंस्ट्रक्टेड बोथ द एंसलेश्वर टेम्पल एंड स्टार्टेड कंस्ट्रक्टिंग दिस फोर्ट इट टूक अराउंड हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टी टू टू हंड्रेड ईयर हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टी टू टू हंड्रेड ईयर्स to complete the the construction of the temple uh, the, that fort so you can see the this both this photo this was in 1870s and this one is very uh, recent one of 2020 same pathanpura gate another jatpura gate this is now the uh, the main gate of chandrapur पठानपुरा हनुमान खिड़की एंड अंचलेश्वर गेट सो थर्ड वन वॉज अ महाकाली महाकाली टेम्पल इट वॉज बिल्ट बाय किंग बीर शाह एक्चुअली क्वीन क्वीन ऑफ बीर शाह शी वॉज कॉल्ड एज अराई क्वीन हिराई सो शी बिल्ट इज अराउंड अराउंड सेवेंटीन हंड्रेड दिस महाकाली टेम्पल इट हैज अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग स्टोरी ऑल्सो actually that uh, that uh, birsha ruled in 16 uh, during 1696 to 17 not four and uh, his son in law durga pal uh, she him is uh, behaved with uh, birsha's daughter and he wanted to to revenge and in the revenge he killed durga pal and uh, took off his head and he placed the head in the northern part of this uh, uh, this temple so uh, before that event happened the bir shah bir shah has uh, 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 took a place in front of mahakali so in the memory of that uh, his queen hirai built this grand uh, mahakali temple so it it stand as a memory of that event when he took revenge of that uh, uh, durgapal here you can see the paintings belong to the late medieval period gond paintings so it has various events and various scenes depicted in the inner walls of the mahakali temple the fair the famous fair of mahakali which is very much popular among the uh, eastern and western vidarbha also in andhra and telangana region lakhs of people come here stay here took a bath in this jharpat river and for them mahakali is is a very prominent goddess like we have in the west end we have jezuri or pandarpur so mahakali is very popular place in the vidarbha region then the bir shah actually the the king who took revenge of durgapal he died very early at the age of 28 during his he he was sonless he did not have any son so uh, actually he was died during his uh, second marriage one of his uh, one of his uh, senapati the sardar killed uh, bir shah before uh, he could marry the second queen so the queen hirai built a great mausoleum great tomb in the memory of queen bir shah so we, we all know that uh, the taj mahal shah jahan built the taj mahal in the loving memory of his wife mumtaz but here the queen she has built this huge tomb in the memory of her loving husband bir shah and since she was uh, she was also sonless she adopted a son ram shah and uh, became a become a regent and she ruled on behalf of uh, uh, ram shah like we have prabhavati gupta the queen uh, uh, the daughter of chandragupta second second uh, and uh, and uh, she is married to the wakataka prince rudrasen second so she ruled when rudrasen to died she ruled on behalf of uh, her uh, her uh, son with children so similarly uh, rani hirai also ruled she also built several other um, several other structures like temples shiva temple ekvira temple ganpati temples so she could also be compared with that of the ahillabai holkar 
who has built several who is very very famous among people for building several uh, monuments temples even renovating and restoring uh, many many uh, 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 various holy places so this is the interior of birshash tomb you can see how intricately has been it has been carved out and how it is very unique in appearance in it's a three dimensional view so you can see the intricacy of this carving see here it is very much comparable with the mughal type of architecture the fine carving the elegance of it and the beauty of it can be seen in you know, the mesh like work it is in in a single stone so it's a monolithic kind of a structure and there was the last one was the lalpet monoliths so uh, in the late uh, medieval period around 17th century so uh, these gigantic 16 structures have been built uh, by one of the one of the uh, trader of chandrapur during the reign of uh, reign of one of the uh, king gond king dundia ram shah so you can see uh, this so these are the ma large monoliths from the later part of uh, later medieval period built during the 17th century uh, you can see the gigantic uh, size of it some uh, some of them are 6 to 7 6 to 8 and some are up to 10 uh, feet in height and width so ganesha garuda kurma avatar vara avatar meen avatar all are there even dashmukhi durga you can see the very peculiar uh, peculiar uh, uh, architecture which is very unique and very rarely seen anywhere so it's a monolithic dashmukhi durga uh, uh, right right of it is a mahishasur mardini she is also a monolithic uh, sculpture here you can see the serpent worship the naga and a shiva linga so these are the 16 monoliths built during the gond later gond uh, dynasty later uh, gond kings and they are the part of the archaeological site today so let's conclude the legacy of the gond dynasty the gonds left a unique legacy their unique uh, style of art and architecture can be seen visible visibly seen from the fort they built sirpur ballarpur and chandrapur fort the chandrapur is the uh, very very large fort with a 12 km long uh, ramparts various bastions and very um, high walls there uh, there wells many of their uh, temples even the tombs they have, they are very large tombs very rarely seen in the maharashtra and people I means if you see the photo if you show the photo to anybody will definitely say it's belong to from belong to any uh, sultanate or mughal era so it's very uh, rare to find in it in uh, maharashtra so they have distincting style of painting we all know that gond art very distinctive art where they use the natural elements and the motives to depict their uh, their thinking their connection with the nature with their natural gods then the popular mahakali uh, fair is obviously connecting the various regions and culture it's it's stand uh, tall on the uh, bank of the jharpat river as a symbol of uh, symbol of connection of synergy even today the system of revenue administration they have made made uh, several revenue villages they have uh, even uh, their system of administration has been followed by british they adopted it, it even they revised it but they basically followed it so the system of revenue administration was basically uh, basically uh, uh, to help the farmers farmers to uh, to develop their land and then uh, the irrigation through lakes this is very peculiar thing rarely uh, rarely any dynasty has uh, promoted a tank and uh, lakes building so we can see the tadoba navegao and all those tanks across this gondwana region especially in eastern vidarbha region people, uh, people call uh, various uh, districts as the districts of lake like we know gondia district itself has a 300 tanks so these gond kings motivated people they gave the land and they asked the people to develop uh, to construct a tank to irrigate it and to collect the revenue for themselves so they promoted the irrigation system which is very unique uh, thing in case of gond dynasty 
even their matrilineal culture, the women were considered as a powerful central force. Like we have Ghotul system, Gons Ghotul system, where women has the right, uh, a girl has the right to choose her uh, life partner. Even the female goddesses they have, like uh, Bhangaram Devi, Bablai Devi, uh, uh, is very famous. Danteshwari, Bamlesh, uh, Bamleshwari. These are the female goddesses. So they give very great importance to these goddesses. Even their uh, their queens, as we have seen, uh, Rani Hiratani, Rani Hirai. they took active part in the political administration also and they built several monuments like ahila bai holkar uh, ahila bai holkar in uh, western india uh, lastly the it, it gave the platform for the uh, folk culture and aboriginal traditions like we have surjagad the famous uh, fair from uh, from the naxalite region of gadchiroli the surjagad mela even bablai uh, mata mela from bhamragad region and the of course the very famous one the kachagad fair Where the lakhs of devotees flock there from various parts of the world, those who belong to the Gond uh, tribe, to that Kacharagad uh, fair. That's it. This is the bibliography, which the books and the reports I referred, because uh, there are very scarcity of uh, matter and references available. So we have to have to rely more on the British records and reports, and the photo I used from British Library and. One of the famous photographers of uh, Chandrapur, Devan and Sakarkar. Okay, thank, thank you very much, Amit. That was really enlightening. So much light you've thrown on a very lesser-known aspect of our culture and heritage. Mm -hmm. uh, let us go to the questions which people have had. I tried to group them into some kind of order. Uh, let us start first by. Uh, 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 you started off by showing some pictures of dinosaur fossils. Yeah, where yeah. where were they being displayed, and where was that image from? I think uh, people have seen that. If you could just tell us where they would be located, the, the museum as such. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the Barapasaurus yes. Tagurai, mm -hmm. as the name Barapa itself is a Bengal from Bengal, so it's from Bengal region. It's from Indian Institute of uh, Indian Statistical Institute of Kolkata. So this is the complete skeleton. Which has been excavated from that side. So there are only okay. two skeletons from India. One, the left, uh, the right one, is from uh, Indian Statistical Institute, Kolkata. The left one uh, of Kota Sorus, it's from uh, Birla Science Museum, Hyderabad. So oh. these are the only two skeletons we have in India. Okay. Now a lot of the hist. So what was your source for all this research? If there were no or very few written records. Where uh, where do you get your information about all these kings and these various dynasties? Was the question from Shubha. Okay, okay. Actually, the other part, the geology and prehistory part, has been uh, discovered, has been uh, researched by various scholars across the world. Mm -hmm. uh, Britishers Britishers make it very popular, very famous. So people uh, research it for for uh, coal mines, their minerals. Even their geological strength, because uh, 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 dinosaurs itself is a very hot topic and very uh, popular topic. So people came here and they research it. So this is the very recent one, recent I means uh, uh, research uh, by various universities like Michigan University, British libraries, and uh, for for the uh, the dynastic political history, the basic source was a, a settlement report of one of the collector of Chandrapur. He made okay. it in 1869. Okay. Lucy Smith, his name. And you said you researched all of this in the British Library. Ha! Huh, some of the some of the papers, some of the photos were from British Library. Oh, okay. Uh, do any survivors, of, do any descendants of the Gond fam royal family still survive today? Yeah, yeah. There are there are uh, many descendants of it. They have different families of it. So. Uh, Uh, there are almost four to five such families who claim that they belong to that Rajgund uh, family. And where would they be located? Would they be still uh, be in the old Gondwana lands, or would they have been scattered all over India and the world? Yeah, yeah. The prominent among them is located in the Gadchiroli region. Okay. Uh, it's part of Gondwana, and some uh, few are scattered in Nagpur, Chandrapur, and in Bandara region. Okay. Uh, you showed us many, many beautiful monuments, Amit. Mm -hmm. Are many of these, or a few of these, protected by the ASI or the State Archaeological Department? Uh, 
yeah some of them are uh, are protected actually the chandrapur the all monuments were protected by uh, archaeological survey of india i see all of them all of them that's good to hear that uh, somebody is taking care of them yeah uh, the question from shruti was is it safe to travel in this region is or is there a fear of naxals does it does make sites does that make sightseeing in this region difficult no no it's not at all difficult because people uh, regularly visit tadoba national park also mm-hmm. they visit they visit anand one of baba amte so it's not at all uh, naxalite affected area the chandrapur actually the chandrapur is not at all affected the naxalism is only uh, there in the gadchiroli and even the interior part of gadchiroli far from the uh, the district place so there okay. is no fair okay um the next question was uh, you've talked about the various rulers of the bone kingdoms and you've talked about a few uh, a prominent women who endowed temples or built uh-huh. temples for uh-huh. the well-being of their husbands health uh-huh. were there any women rulers in their own rights actually uh, the queen hirai ruled for uh, around 15 15 20 years when okay. her son was very uh, son was adopted son so she was ruling on behalf of that son Okay, so basically, it was a patriarchal society, or was it matrilineal? Uh, actually, the the dynasty seems like a patri patriarchal, but the culture, Gond culture itself, is very, very matrilineal culture. Many okay. of their goddesses and even the uh, the status of women is very high. Yes, you mentioned that when the you talked about the queens who were endowing the temples for the uh-huh. welfare of their husbands. Uh-huh. Uh, there seem to be a lot of islamic influences yeah so yeah. Uh, in that you mentioned certain names which are ending with shah so did that influence percolate down to the common people besides being the besides the royal families being affected by that uh actually that that region has remained aloof of uh, this islamic uh, 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 this effect so uh, there was there was impact of islamic rule but it was very uh, very minimal okay uh, though though there are saints islamic saints in those, this region also but mm-hmm. most of the population is uh, belong to a uh, tribal only and uh, some of them are uh, from uh, uh, the agricultural community like kunbi community okay so muslim population is very less okay so there was not a significant influence would no, that be no. correct to say okay yeah um what was the relationship of uh, the bone since they are so close to the nizam's territory what was their relationship with the nizams uh actually uh, the part of uh, their territory was uh, was uh, at some point of time was taken by nizam then again they took back from nizam but the actually a uh, nizam means being geographically isolated if you see the from godavari pranitha region it's very difficult to Uh, intrude into this region and I also see. to fight with it so okay. uh, uh, basically they were feudatory or they were paying tributes to nizams bahman shahi and even to moguls okay so it was like a so vassal that, relationship vassal relationship in your study of this culture have you come across any inscription was a question from shubha khandekar um uh, actually there are hundreds of inscriptions from uh, mauryan period up to uh, say maratha period okay. so so uh, uh, there are some dynastic capitals like uh, nagardhan mm-hmm. uh, even there are temple sites like markanda temple there are inscriptions and bhadravati uh, so there are so many inscriptions from chalukyas rashtrakutas vakatakas maurya so inscriptions are very much there okay uh dipali's question is that in she's not seen in other parts of the world where tribals and forest dwellers have as, achieved such power and built such great monuments or cities so how did the gone kings make this transition from basically being tribal gatherers hunters to a dynastic kind of a rule uh actually uh, the the gone tribe has uh, different sub tribes so these uh, these people they belong to rajgond the royal gond uh, sub tribe so there are other sub tribes like madia who are mm-hmm. actually a forest dwe- dweller even today and mm-hmm. that is the that is the same area where naxalites are there since they are far from the development so naxalites also uh, want that occupying, occupying that area but this rajgond tribe 
was very far from uh, from that and it, it was very uh, means comparatively a rich and powerful uh, dyna- uh, powerful people okay. they had a strong community so they built an empire so the question you mentioned kachargar quite often the festival and the fair over there how does one go to kachargar is a question from aruna uh kachargar is very uh, very much accessible from uh, nagpur actually uh, the famous darekasa or salekasa tunnel there is there is a railway station very near like 5 to 10 kilometers near from that place so it's very much accessible from uh, railway network so okay. gondi gondia also a, a, a very prominent uh, junction and nagpur also so it's accessible okay did the various uh, royal families of the various kingdoms did they intermarry or were they separate branches um actually these tribes being a tribal community they believes in uh just a minute ha huh, they believe in this uh, separation of tribes their community so they have their gods so like three gods four gods five gods seven gods so some tribe they, they worship three gods so they call as tin dev some are called as five dev some are called as seven dev so they follow that norms which we uh, have today like sub caste or sub communities so speaking of sub caste and some sub communities are there any surnames which are typically used nowadays we can identify a gond person or a person of gond origin uh yeah we can very well identify like uh, we have surname like sidam netam pusam atram uh, these are the uh, famous surnames even madavi madavi kulmethe okay um there have been this stories and legends about the clash between akbar and uh, durgavati can you tell us a little more about that uh actually uh, that rani durgavati she belonged to devgad uh, gond dynasty uh, that devgada was devgad dynasty ruling from chindwada region later they came to uh, to the northern part of vidarbha and then acquired nagpur region also nagpur territory also and they built nagpur capital so uh, when akbar actually attacked this region and he intruded into uh, region he even captured barar region of Uh, of vidarbha very uh, near to vidarbha so he went through that jungle and he came to central india and then she fought with akbar very fearful fight means it has to be described in deep so she fought with it being a woman being a tribal woman and that to a vessel king means they were the prominent kings but as compared to the sultanates mughals they were not so uh, so pop, so prominent and had uh, had a large army uh, army and all those uh, armaments like mughals so being in women also and being a tribal queen also she fought with akbar so that's why it made a very a very popular story how she fought with the uh, akbar and she refused to give it away though they offered means they have given offers like you surrender it you pay tribute uh, and you will uh, will not annex your uh, the entire and the part of it you have to uh, uh, to give it to us but she refused to do that so where does one look for a document authentic documentation of the akbar durgavati story actually uh, in case of gond gond dynasty it's very difficult to find any authentic document because they themselves being aloof from uh from all these other other dynasties and other cultures so they did not believe as such more on uh, keeping document and maintaining it so uh, having been uh, ruled for those 400 500 years hardly we found any document from their era from contemporary period which they made so we could definitely go through the contemporary records which have been maintained by bahmanis by mughals even by british by uh, uh, boslas so these are the secondary references okay. it's always from their point of view then ha uh, ha ha uh some the question was did they have any armed conflict with mainstream rulers i think you've already answered that mm-hmm. moving on mithila wants to know if there's a sep- if they had a separate language or dialect and in case they did does it survive today yeah uh, <laughs> since uh, the population is very high uh, like 1.3 crores so they have their own dialect it's it is survived 
having uh, such a large population, such a large area. We have seen the central India is very large area, uh, but the di the dialect itself is very uh, very oral one. They never been written down, so you will not find any inscription from that period in that language. So it's very very much there. Britishers started like Stephen Hislop of Nagpur. We have Hislop College in Nagpur, so he he was the first. Who started uh, writing down, documenting those languages? Even government of India, from uh, uh, since last decade, they have start uh, they have started documenting and to uh, collecting all those uh, uh, all those ballads and all uh, folk stories and songs and even their scripts also. So, so it becomes they, very important to document the oral yeah. history then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think the last question for the day. What is the difference between Varhad and Vidarbha? Huh, actually, actually uh, the Varhad region, what what Britishers called as a Berar, it's a western part of Vidarbha. The eastern part, to from Vardha River onward, up to the uh, up to the boundaries of Satpura in the north or Narmada, uh, uh, to Godavari in the south. And east eastward towards the Chhattisgarh, the area is known as Vidarbha. And to the uh, to the uh, left of it is called as a Varar or called as a Berar. Though it has irregular boundary with that of the Vidarbha, but the eastern part is Vidarbha, and the western western uh, part is called as a Berar region. Uh, that is what the Britishers corrupted to Berar. Berar. Okay. So it is called as a Sippi Berar, Central Province and Berar. So Vidarbha was a part of a central province. Yes. Uh, yeah. Um, and I think the last question, which has just come in, mm -hmm. uh, is it correct that Gon music called Gondi Baja, is, which is still played during Ganpati, pa, is is derived from that tradition? Uh, Gondi Baja played during Ganpati. Ganpati, because Ganpati is not a popular god in in the uh, Gondi uh, culture. Mm -hmm. So uh, I have not heard of such Gondi Baja in that region when I okay okay okay. If I may add, Amit, ah. I am from Nagpur, and you know this is a percussion. Like we have this Nasik band, which is played during Ganpati immersion. Ah. Ah. Simply for a lot of social events, ah. uh, they uh, they play this per kind of percussion. You know, which is called Gondi Baja. Okay, 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 okay. That could be okay. Very Thanks for adding to that, Rajesh. Yeah, uh, I think that brings us to the end of our questions. Amit, it was a really great session. You let us, you threw so much light on a, on a subject which not many people know about, though it's always there at the back of people's minds. One always sees these gold paintings and hears about them, but uh, it was really fascinating to go into all the details. So thank you for that. Thank you to our audience for attending this, uh, this session. And... Uh, uh, Please do attend as many of our future sessions as you can. We did show you all our earlier topics uh, at the start of the uh, session. And do keep on following us on social media to be aware of our future talks. Looking forward to seeing you again and good night. Thank you once again, Amit. Thank you. Thank you so much.